Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to be giving you a beginner's guide to using Movie Edit Pro 2019. So let's go ahead and boot up the software. So we're using Movie Edit Pro Premium 2019, this particular version. And the first thing it's going to do is ask me to give a project name here. So I can leave it as the default name or I can give it a specific name. In this case, uh, we're going to call it, we're going to be editing a video and it's going to be called Star Wars Lightsaber Unboxing and Mr. King here. And then we need to select a format. Now, the format really depends on how you've captured the content. So if we were to look at, this is a folder on my desktop and in this folder here, um, these are the various assets that we're going to be using to create the final video clip itself. Most of this content will go into that video clip. Uh, here's the video that we filmed. So let's just right click and go to details. And here you can see it's running at 29.86 frames. So it's close to 30 frames a second, uh, running at 1080p. So 30 frames a second at 1080p. That's what the actual video content is. So we need to find 30 frames a second or something close to that, right? So here you can see we want 1080p. Let's find. Uh, so we can use this file here. So it's 1920 by 1080 running at 29.975 frames. It's exactly the same. So we'll click on that. And then the audio sample rate, we can select a different audio sample rate, but we're going to leave it at the highest because we want the best quality audio. And what we would do is select a folder. So here we're going to go to YouTube here. We're going to select this folder and then we're going to click create. So in theory, let's just save this and we'll go to here and click save. So now we have our original make file. We call this the make file. So if we ever want to go back and edit the video again, we can just open this file and it will give us all of our information back for the video edit. So there's a couple of ways that you can get content into Movie Edit Pro. There's the import function here, or you can just navigate to your desktop and drag and drop from this particular folder or any other sort of location on your machine. You can just drag and drop straight into the timeline. So what, what do we see on the screen? Really, there's only three, comp there's three main components here, right? There's the import and all the effects and audio here and the store and so forth. So this is, we can consider this to be one section here. Then we've got the actual video monitor here. So this is what we will see the video content in here. And then we have a timeline down here. Now this timeline section is broken down into a few different parts. So as default, when this software will load up, normally it loads up with um, this option selected storyboard mode. And then next to that, you have scene view, scene overview, and then you have the timeline. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time I'm working on this timeline. Uh, if you're doing like, you know, like really, really large uh, video edits, you know, for big content, maybe some film productions or something like this, or you're doing some, you know, some amateur productions, then you may be using some of these other settings. But as default, when I'm editing content, I'm pretty much 99% on this timeline mode. So we'll select this timeline mode here. Now we want to start getting content into the timeline. So... Um, there's two options. We can either start dragging and dropping from here, or we can just see, see the folder up here and we can drag and drop directly from the folder. So we'll give it both, we'll test out both methods. But for now, I want to use this particular video. So this is almost like a little intro video and we want to overlay the logo. So this is almost like the intro to the YouTube video that we're going to be creating. So we'll drag and drop this onto the timeline. And in here it says, um, the active movie has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 at 29 frames a second. And the file that we just drag and dropped is 30 frames a second. Do you want to adjust the video content? And we're going to say, do not adjust because it's not, it's not going to be too much of a problem. The frame rates are very close. Now, what we can do is we have a logo here. So this is the Unbox Kings logo. And we want to drag and drop that onto the timeline. So we're going to drag and drop it on the line below. So now we have two elements. Let's always save our work as we go. So we click the save button. So we've got two elements now. We've got the video background here. And what you'll notice is the video background sits on the top line. And then the unbox logo sits underneath. 
Now, if I if I were to put the video time or the the video background below and then unbox kings on top, then really this video is covering over unbox kings logo. So you have to think of it a bit. You must think about this as being like the most bottom layer, and then this will be a layer on top, and then on top. So it's going kind of in the opposite way than you would normally use in maybe sort of like Photoshop, where it's the, the, the logic is the other way. So consider this to be the very bottom layer, this first one, and then the layers stack this way around. That's how you have to think of it. So here we can see the video content in the video player here, and you can see the logo there. So that's that's working fine. And what we need to decide is how long do we want this logo to display for? Now, you know, YouTube, you don't really want your logo there for too long. So we need to, and this is actually just a still image. You can see it's a PNG file. So it's a PNG file with a transparent background. That's why it's showing kind of see-through. And what we want to do is set this, this image to a certain duration. There's a few different ways you can do that. You can either drag here on the side, so you can select from the side here and drag it in and out to select the, the relevant uh, duration you want. Or, which I find easier, is to right click and go to change photo length here. And when you do that, you can set it to a very specific time. So I want this to display for five seconds. So here's five seconds and we'll click OK and then that will get resized to five seconds exactly. Now, if we hold down on the control key on our keyboard and use the mouse wheel, we can zoom in and out of the timeline. Now what you see is at the beginning here to this point is one second. This is two seconds. This is three, four, five seconds and six and seven and so forth. And if we hold down the control key, and use the mouse wheel, we can zoom in the timeline and zoom out. So this is representing five seconds now. You can see the five second gap. And as you zoom in, these increments will stretch out and you can get more and more granulated. You can even, you know, really zoom down to the frame, you could say. So we're going to zoom out so we see like the second view, you could say, per second. And then what we want to do is move our mouse cursor. And as we're moving our mouse cursor, uh, sorry, the uh, the timeline cursor here, this, this orange bar, this is called the timeline cursor. Uh, we want to move it to exactly one second. So how do we know exactly where, is it here, is it over here, where is exactly one second? Now the easy way to work that is to keep an eye on here. Because you can see it's like, uh, this is hours, minutes, seconds, and these are frames you could say, yeah? So we want to set this to 0, 1, 0, 0. So we're going to move back, um, let's just see. We're going to move all the way back to this position here. And then what we want to do uh, is move, let's just check here. Yeah, we'll move to this position. This is fine. Let's move back. So you can, we can use this button right here to move back to the beginning of the timeline. And then we can click play. And then we'll see the logo up here. And after five seconds, it's going to disappear. And probably five seconds, let's just double check that. It's probably a bit too long. So let's set it to four seconds. We'll reduce that a bit. And what we want to do is fade in the logo and fade out the logo. That's the first thing we want to do. So to do that, I'm going to hold down the shift key just to enlarge the row height here, just so you can see it a bit easier. So if you hold down the shift key and using the mouse wheel, you can almost zoom in and out as well as zoom in and out on the timeline. You can zoom in and out on these these particular rows. And when you hover over this, this uh, image, you'll see these two little white handle circles right at the top here. And you can use those to drag them in. You can drag them in like this, and we can drag the end one in also like this and then that will be like a fade so if we go back to the beginning and click play we'll see the logo fade in and then we we'll see the logo fade out so that's what we want we just want a simple fade in and fade out audio and stuff like that we're going to add later so we'll add some audio at the beginning it's nice to have a bit of audio when the the uh the video clip is playing right so you can see this background is way too long look how long it is it's just too long so we want to edit the background, this, this blue background, and reduce the duration of it. Now, 
what we need to decide is what happens after this logo disappears. And normally what I would do is display some information about what this video is going to be about, this actual video that we're editing. So to do that, uh, the smart thing we can do first of all is go to, we'll go to templates here. And inside templates, you've got all of these different options, right? And they're broken down into sections. So you've got transitions here, you've got title templates, you've got movie templates and editing templates, you've got intro animations, you've got movie loops and all of these design elements and so forth, these objects here. And in this tutorial, because it's a beginner's tutorial, we're really going to focus mainly on transitions and title templates. And maybe we're going to look at some effects as well. We're looking at the effects section. We're going to be using some of these tools as well. So for now, what we really want to do is add a title uh, and we're going to use movement basic here. So when we click on movement basic, you see all of these different transitions of titles. There's quite a few different options here. And if you were to click on one, if you click the play button, it will show you what it's going to look like here. So that one kind of fades in from the from behind and it zooms in and then it zooms out at the end. So we can either use that one or there's the opposite where it zooms out large and then it zooms into the smaller and fades away. So I think we'll use that one. So we're going to take this and all we need to do is left click on it and drag and drop it onto the timeline. And we're going to drag and drop it right here. Let's uh, try that one more time. Yep, drag and drop it here. And if you drag and drop anywhere on the timeline, if you want to move this element, we want to move it so it sits right next to this one. You can just click on it and drag it across and it will snap automatically to the, to the object next to it. So it's nice and easy to do that, right? Use this snapping tool here, object grid. So you make sure this is enabled, this option here. Now, right now it just says lower ellipsum in there. So we want to edit that. So to edit the content inside of this, this title here, we're just going to double click here. So we double click on this and then we get access to this text editor where we can type in um, the content for what we want to display here. And then we're going to write in here, Mace Windu Star Wars Light Saber. So we just want to type in Mace Windu Star Wars Lightsaber Unboxing. That's the content. And we want to change the font. So you can do, you can play around, experiment with these. You've got italic and bold and quite a few different options in here. You can change the font size here. You can have um, sort of um, all these different effects, right? So in here, we want to select a specific font. So I've got this font here called Star Jedi, right? It's like a Star Wars font. And what we'll do is just click back onto this yellow box down here and that will move us out of the editor here. And now let's see what our video looks like so far. So we'll go to the beginning of the timeline. Let's save this work and we'll click play. And we've got the background and we've got this logo showing and that will fade out. And then it will say Mace Windu Star Wars lightsaber unboxing. And there's a typo in there. So let's fix that. That's better. Okay. So now we know roughly where we want our background to end, right? We want our background to end here and then we're going to fade into the actual main content. So let's do that. So normally what I would do is always leave a little extra space afterwards. So if I zoom in a little bit here, I'll leave this gap here, you see. I won't cut the video here, I'll cut it a few frames afterwards. So I'll like leave this little gap this section of the background because I want to use that to fade and do a transition. I'm going to explain that in a moment. So we need to cut this background and get rid of all of this stuff on the right hand side here. And to do that, we're going to click on it. So we make sure our timeline uh, marker is in the right position and we'll click on that background clip so it goes yellow and then we'll use the cut or the split object here. So we we'll click this and now we've got one section here and one section here. And we're going to click on the right hand side and delete it. So let's look at the video content we have in here. And there's two parts to that video. There's the first part and the second part here. 
and we want to drag the first part into the timeline. So let's click the play button. Right. Okay. And what we want to do is just drag that video and overlap it a bit. So if you look here, can you see there's this X in here? So to do that, what I'm doing is I'm taking the clip on the right hand side and dragging it into the one on the left hand side. And that's going to do a fade effect. It's going to transition between them. So let's watch that happen. It's probably too quick. Try that. So it's very fast. So maybe what I need to do is delete this. Uh, what we do, I'm just using Control Z to undo, and I'm going to undo that cut and give myself a bit more uh, duration there, right? So I've undone that. Let's give ourselves a bit more to do this fade. So let's see. That should be enough. So I've gone from 0 0.9 to 0 0.10, so it's about a second there. So let's cut this now and delete this. And we'll drag that video back in. And then our fade will be a bit longer now. Let's see what that looks like. Right. Right. Okay. That's better now, right? Right. Okay. Now, what we can do is we can add a special type of uh, transition over this. At the moment, it's just fading from the background to this video clip. And if we go into templates here and we click on something like, uh, let's say, shapes and objects, right? We can use some of these shapes and objects to do the transition to give it a bit more of an effect. So we could click on something like uh, ring growing. Yeah? So we click on it and play it. You'll see what it looks like then what we can do is drag that onto this section here and then we can click play and we see a different effect now. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. And here you can see it a bit, if I slow it down a bit, that's the effect. That's what will happen when you had that particular transition. So, so far we have this background that will start, then our logo will show. And we're going to have music playing here as well afterwards. Then the logo will fade out. The title will fade in. It will then zoom in, zoom out. Yep, it's going to do that. And then we have that little effect here. Then we've got the video playing. And it's this, this is my friend here. And he's going to be unboxing this Star Wars lightsaber. So here we can see him unboxing it. And... Uh, We'll scrub through this timeline and we want to get to a certain position. We want to get to certain points where we're going to do some editing. So here he's putting the batteries into the Star Wars lightsaber, right? So I'm just going to move across the timeline. And all I'm doing is uh, holding the timeline marker and just dragging to the end of the screen, holding down the left mouse button. That will allow me to scrub through the timeline. There's a few different ways to scrub through. I'll show you that as well later. Uh, you can use this as well to move across larger points. And around here, I want to do a little edit. So I'm going to click the play button. On, ah, see it, on and off. And just before he turns it on, I want to do an edit here. Oh. Right there. Oh. So what I'm going to do is have my timeline marker right here. I'm going to click the split object. So now I've got two parts to that video. And then I want to scrub across. <laughs> and about here I want to cut it. So I've got this middle section now. I'm going to drag this. I'm going to left click on it and drag it across to make some space here. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then I want to copy this. So I'm going to select this little selection, this section here that I've just cut out. I'm going to click on it, left, yeah, I'm going to left click and then press Control C to copy and then Control V to paste. And I'm going to paste it twice. So this section is going to loop basically. It's going to show it once, show it twice, and then show it three times. Here. So the first one I'll allow it to play normally. 
I'm going to click on the middle section here. And in this section, I want to do some little effects to it. So what I want to do is click on the effects here. And this, this middle section of the three is selected. And I'm going to scroll down and click on size and position. And I want to zoom in. And I want to move the screen down a bit so you can see them. And then I'm going to go to, we can zoom out a little bit, that's a bit too far, say about here. Now make sure when you zoom, imagine this is actually, this, this box represents the video, right? So this will all be black in the video, so we need, really need to move it up, right? To make sure it fills the whole box. So let's just see. So here it's zoomed in more. And what we want to do also is uh, we want to go to rotate and mirror. And in the rotation, I'm going to set it to 180. So he's on the other side now. So he's talking here. <clears throat> he turns it on. It flips to this side. And then it will flip back to here. But on this last one, we will go to start position here size and position and we'll zoom in even more a lot closer and we'll drag it down to here and now we can grab this right hand side and drag it back again so this is like a little um, really what i'm trying to show you here is how to cut certain sections how you can loop them how you can cut certain content out of this video clip right so when we play it oh, ah, see, I found it so that's a little sequence there and we will continue to um, scrub across this timeline and we're going to get to this point here where he's waving the lightsaber right he waves it once this side and waves it back again and there's some nice space above where we can do some work. So what I want to do is catch it. So here he waves it over once and then he waves it back again. Now what I want to do here is in here I've got this little spaceship. And as he's waving the lightsaber across the top, I want the spaceship to appear and then I want as his lightsaber hits the spaceship, I want it to explode. So we're going to do a little bit of, you know, timing, video timing in here is quite important. So what we do for now is just take the spaceship and drag and drop it onto the timeline here. So you can see the spaceship's way too big. So we want to resize that. So we'll click on the spaceship itself. We'll go to effects here and we're going to go to size and position and we're going to zoom out and get it to about a size that we like. So something like, around this sort of size and let's move the spaceship into position so we want to move it above his head because he's going to wave the lightsaber this way so let's scrub through the timeline and we want to get it where the lightsaber is at this position just above his head and then we can move the spaceship to a closer position where the lightsaber is going to hit it right so here you can see as he's waving the lightsaber it's going to hit he's going to hit it right there on that frame uh, there now what I'm gonna do let's just save this and I'm gonna hold down the control key and I want to zoom in a bit here I want to zoom in on this uh, this spaceship this this timeline here now although this is a still image we can still animate that image we can make that image drop him from the top, from the left, from the right. We can do really what we want with the image. And there's another timeline here. Now this timeline that you see here belongs specifically to this particular object or the object that you're selecting. So this is just a still image, but it has its own timeline here where we can animate. So if you're familiar with animation, we normally work on keyframes. So you have a start keyframe and you have a middle one and you have many keyframes and you have an end keyframe. And each keyframe will tell the software where to position the object. And this happens to be the object, the uh, spaceship. So the smart thing for us to do is set the keyframe right here, because this is where the lightsaber hits the spaceship. So we're going to set a keyframe. You see this little option here says set a new keyframe at the current position. So we're going to click that and that will set the keyframe right in that position. 
we're going to click on this option here as well and what this allows you to do is to basically smooth the, the animation so it will start kind of fast and it will slow down it will gradually slow down as it gets to this particular keyframe now what we're going to do is drag this timeline so this timeline cursor here we're going to drag it to the beginning right here and we want to move this spaceship but before we move it we're going to set a keyframe so we've got another keyframe here and we're going to click on this uh, this spaceship here and we're going to hold down the control key and we're going to use the mouse wheel to zoom out a bit on this video clip because so we want to move the spaceship above out of the video clip so it's sitting outside and then it's going to drop down and then these lightsabers are going to hit it's going to explode basically so to move this there's a couple of options we can just drag it with our mouse but the better option is to use this this section here where it says 54 in here at the moment we're going to left click inside and holding holding down the left mouse button we're going to drag down and that will move the object up here you see and we just want it out of frame so if i were to click on the video and go to here and set it to 100 percent you can see you don't see that spaceship anymore but as we scrub through the timeline if we do it quite slowly you see the spaceship will gradually start to show and it will stop when he hits it with a lightsaber right here now we want to add some effects so we want this spaceship to explode when his lightsaber hits it right so we need to figure out how we're going to do that so i've got this video clip here that's this one i'm playing right now so i'll click on this and it's got these sparks in there it's various different types of sparks you can see and we can pick some of these sparks or these are these explosions and use that to explode the spaceship so let's give that a go so what i'll do is i'll drag the sparks onto the timeline and it says here that the um the sparks are running at 24 frames a second do you want to adjust it i don't want to adjust it so i'm going to say do not adjust because our main content is running at 29 frames so that's the master content that's the thing that we want to make sure the frame rate rate is correct on this video content at the top timeline and you'll notice that <clears throat> every time I add um, some new content I'm putting it onto its own timeline so I'm not overlapping the sparks on the 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 spaceship above for example okay so <clears throat> so here we've got the sparks and you can see like these various effects and we want to find one that we like so we've got this one here so we're going to probably use this bit here so we want to get to the first frame and we're going to click on this spark video and we're going to cut it and we're going to delete this first part we don't need that because we want to start on this frame and we're going to scrub through the video and we're probably going to end it on like this frame here so we'll click here and cut it one more time and delete that as well now we need to know where do we want to position these sparks but the first thing we should really do because if you notice when the sparks play it's all black and it's overlapping the content because it's on the bottom timeline here it's overlapping everything above it so the first thing we want to do is get rid of this black background so we'll click on the sparks here on the timeline we're going to scroll up and inside the effects section we're going to click on chroma key here and we're going to select black and black will make the um the background disappear on these sparks so now when you see the spark you see the background has been removed because we're using the black uh, chroma key here remember the video um this uh these sparks had a black background right so let's move through the timeline again and at this frame here let's zoom in a little bit so I'm going to hold down the control key to zoom in on this timeline and where are we so on this frame right here is where he hits the spaceship with the lightsaber so I'm going to drag these sparks to this position here and then I'm going to click on the the sparks for each so make sure it's selected and I'm going to scroll down here and select size and position and I want to zoom out a little bit because I want the sparks to be a bit smaller they're a bit too big 
so something like this and then I can just click on the sparks and overlap it where the spaceship is right now what do I need to do I need to get rid of the spaceship so I'm going to click on the spaceship this uh, graphic here I'm going to click on the scissors here to split the spaceship this graphic so there's two parts and I'm going to delete the end part so let's watch what happens now so I'm going to move back the timeline and click play. Solid as well. Solid as well. And you can see how that works. The spaceship will appear. He will hit it with a lightsaber. It will explode. And then he will move the lightsaber to the other side. And let's have a bit of fun and maybe uh, we'll put one on the way back as well, right? Maybe here. So we'll move the timeline to this position. And to make life easy, we'll select the spaceship and we'll select the sparks footage we'll press so if I hold down the shift key so holding down the shift key I'll click on the first clip this spaceship and then holding down the shift key I'll click on the sparks footage and that will select both of them I'll press Control C on my keyboard I'll make sure my timeline cursor is in the right position where the lightsaber is and I'll press Control V and if we move back a bit, this is timeline. So, so here you'll see it here. But the, the timing is off, right? So we need to fix the timing now. So we'll click on this spaceship here. This is the second spaceship. Let's double click on it. And we're probably going to need to move that back a bit, right? So we're going to move it back here and we're going to click on this spaceship and move across the timeline to about this position here and we'll click uh, create new keyframe right here then we can take the spaceship you can just about see it off the screen so we can hold down we can click on it hold down the control key and zoom out a bit so we can see the spaceship here and we just want to move that into position so we're going to click on it let's go to make sure you select size and position here and we should be able to just drag it down a bit here so let's see and about here is where it's going to hit get hit with a lightsaber so what we can do is grab our sparks again and slide that here and we can move the sparks so we'll click on this second set of sparks here and we're just going to drag it over the spaceship like this and then we can click on the spaceship object cut it and then delete this end part so hopefully that makes sense because if we do this slowly now the lightsaber will come across he will hit it and it will explode and then we're timing it on the way back again so on the way back it will show another spaceship and it will hit that one and it will explode so yeah it does take a bit of time to get all of that right but you know you can do loads of different stuff in your software so you just need to learn the tools and these are some of the basic things that you can do you can see how many different types of tools are here uh, you need to go and experiment with them all and understand and learn how they all work. But, um, you know, it's pretty interesting stuff. So let's keep moving across the timeline. And we'll find uh, another part. Let's see here. A new lightsaber. What's it? FX. <laughs> the false FX lightsaber collectible. Yeah. I'm yo. My boy. Okay, so I think around here. <laughs> G 
just before let's go back a bit right there so I want to cut it here so I'm going to click cut and we'll cut it here and this section here I want to replicate it three times like we did before so I'm going to select it copy it move the timeline across to here paste it three times and then we'll do that similar thing that we did last time so we select the first one will play normally the middle one will will click on this timeline clip here and we will then go to size and position we will zoom in a little bit and we're going to go to rotate and we'll rotate it 180 degrees so it's the other way around and then on the last clip we will just zoom only so we'll click size and position and we'll zoom in so something like this so let's see how that works <laughs> so let's continue we've got a few more little bits to do in here I'm going to zoom out so we can move across the timeline a bit quicker. So if you zoom right out, you can scrub through the timeline much quicker. And there's one other thing I want to show you. So I need to find a bit of the video where I can show you that. So let's just... Uh... We we'll show you a bit of motion tracking. So, in fact, what we could do. Let's do that here. So when we cut these three videos here, let's just show you how to do a bit of motion tracking. So in this middle section, we do a bit of motion tracking on this, this middle part here, this clip here. So whenever you click on a clip, you'll see that the timeline you can scrub across the timeline using this tool up here but it'll only be for the section that you're clicking on this yellow section here so you need to you need to be aware of that so when you click on this and you move it you can see it's moving the timeline there so we're going to go right to the beginning of this frame this or this this yellow section here and we're going to click add keyframe and we'll make sure that the smoothing is enabled and we've got these sunglasses right let's just load them up we've got these glasses and we're going to overlay the glasses on him and then as he's moving his face or his head we'll motion track it so we'll drag and drop the sunglasses onto the video clip here and they're quite big so we need to just reduce them in size let's get them down to something like maybe maybe a bit exaggerated right we'll drag and drop them into position here they're yeah, probably a bit too big Let's make them a bit smaller. Something like that would be good, right? And as he's moving his head, we want to track these glasses to where his eye positions are. So we're going to insert, we're going to click on this, uh, this yellow graphic down here the glasses we're going to insert a keyframe and we'll do this uh, smoothing option here and we're going to move a few frames and then we'll just drag the glasses as he moves 
to this position. And when you move the glasses, a new keyframe will be generated automatically. So you don't have to actually enter a keyframe. So we'll drag them up here. And then we'll move them up to here. So I'm going to do this a bit rushed and I'll take a bit longer, a bit more time over it, but I just want to give you an idea. You can apply this, this effect, this sort of tracking effect to any type of video really. We can tidy it up a little bit afterwards. We just want to get the basic tracking. You can see his head is tilted slightly. So what we can do is go to rotate. And we want to rotate it using this one here, right? So we'll rotate them slightly. Like here. That's it. Then it moves to the next frame. So at this position, uh, we want to select the um, glasses down here and then cut it and get rid of this. So let's see what happens here. So the tracking isn't the best. I should have spent a lot longer on that, but you get the idea, right? <laughs> so normally I would have spent a lot longer tracking those glasses and refining it, but we don't want to spend too long doing that right now. So we've added quite a few things in here. Let's see, let's just do a quick overview of what we've got so far. So if we go to the beginning, we've got the intro with the logo fading in and out. We've put in the, the title fading in and out. Then we did that transition, that custom transition in there. Then we've got the video playing. Then we've got this looping effect here. We did the motion tracking on the glasses. Then uh, what do we have here? Then we have the the um, spaceships exploding. And then we did another looping cut here. And then at the very end, let's just go to the end. What we've got to be careful of is, uh, let's just zoom out here. Make sure that your there's no gaps in between your content, right? <laughs> That's fine. Okay, we're gonna go to the end of the timeline. And this is the end of the video here. And what we want to do now is um, we wanna we wanna fade into this second video clip. So if you look here on my content, I've got another video clip here. So I want to drag and drop that into the timeline like this and then we'll overlap them slightly just by let's see how that looks it fades to black so I don't know if um, these rings will work let's try yeah, it's pretty fast, so let's give it a bit more time. Show us your skills, Mr. Tongue. Yeah, okay, all right. Let's fire this bad boy up. Let's see. Yeah! So here we've got like a dark scene with a lightsaber. Just having a bit of fun. And at the very end of this video clip, we want to fade back into an outro. Now here's a little tip for you. Let's just save this. We're almost done now. So on YouTube, when you get to the end of a video, YouTube um, basically allows you to put in uh, your like, like your logo in the center, which is like a subscribe, and you can put alternative videos for people to watch. So if they watch the first video and go to the very end, they'll see your logo where you, where you click on it and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel, and there'll be a box on the left and the right, or maybe two or three boxes displaying other videos that they can watch so 
um, YouTube allows you to display that content for 20 seconds at the end or the video clip and what we'll do is drag and drop in our background so we'll find the background here we'll drag and drop that onto the timeline we just want to move this up to here in this position and we'll go to this very first frame and we want to go 20 seconds in so the left hand side will always show you where you are on the timeline and the right hand side will show you the total duration of the video here and so we're at 8 44 15 and we want to be 20 seconds in so that would be 90415 so we're going to scrub to 90415 90415 here that will be 20 seconds so we'll click here and we'll cut and we'll get rid of this end part and this will be a 20 second still frame at the end but what we will do is we will put our logo there so let's find we'll grab the unboxing logo we'll put that on the timeline and we're going to display that for about four seconds as well let's do it for around three seconds and we'll zoom in a little bit here and we're just going to put a fade on each side so it will fade in and out we'll move back here and click play really we want to drag this over a bit right Yeah, something like this. Uh, then we can put a transition on that as well. <laughs> something like that. Normally I'll tidy this up and spend a bit more time on it, but... Okay, so that will be like the end of the video. Then this logo will show and then you've got some still frames afterwards where you can display your channel logo, your YouTube channel logo. You don't really have to do this end part, but normally I put like a YouTube channel logo here with some alternative videos. So that's why I've got these blank frames, well not blank frames, but this animation at the end. So let's just save this. Let's click save. And the last thing we want to do is put some audio in here. So there's a couple of ways to get to the beginning of the timeline. The quickest way is to click this button here and that will say jump to beginning of movie. So let's click that and it'll take us to the very first frame. And in here I've got this MP3 file. So you've got a couple of options. Um, if you look inside here, audio, click here, audio, Magix is giving you some free audio to use as well. So there's some. So there's some free audio clips here and there's tons of effects and transitions in here as well there's a lot of different effects and transitions in here and there's a lot of templates that you can use and there's some like still graphics here if you want to use some still images um, then you've got things like uh, all of these different types of transitions here I don't really want to show you them all because if you buy the software I want you to like experiment with them and see what effects you can get rather than me showing you that showing all of them to you and same with all the title transitions here there's probably one other thing we could do uh, before we finish. So normally in a video, you might ask, especially with YouTube, you might ask people to subscribe to your channel, right? So somewhere like here, uh, let's let's get it out of frame. So somewhere like here, where he's holding the lightsaber up, we could put a like a little little section here, just saying subscribe to our YouTube channel for more free videos or something, right? So let's find some way of doing that. So in here. I believe uh, we should have caption basic here. Yeah? So in here we can see that there's different caption effects. So there's ones that are in like the corner here. You've got ones that this that pop out from the side, and you've got all these different effects. These different ones. So you can pick one that you like. You can even make your own custom ones if you want. 
if you, if you know how to use like uh, something like a uh, 3D, like something like Blender, you could do this with. Or we can just drag one of these. So let's see what this one is. This one's quite nice. It's kind of Star Wars-y sort of thing. So I'm going to drag that onto the timeline here. So here you've got these different sections. Each one represents a different part of the actual um, this this animation sequence. And the bottom one is going to be, I believe, the actual written content. So in here I'm going to say uh, subscribe for more um, boxing videos. And we might select that and change it to that Star Wars font so we've got some consistency. You see what it looks like. So subscribe for more unboxing videos. So if we play it now. Oh my god, I can feel the force already. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Alright, so So there you can see what that subscription request would look like. Um, we can select all of these, copy them, we can zoom right out, move to another part, point of the timeline where maybe he's not where you're not doing anything quite low in the video and paste it here as well. So you can just copy them, paste them here. So we can maybe make two requests in the video clip for people to subscribe. So I kind of forgot that because normally in my videos when I do them for my own um, channel I always ask people to subscribe that way you can you know if you don't ask you don't get in life right so ask people to subscribe and maybe they will so let's go to the beginning of the timeline and what we want to do here is add some audio but only at the beginning part uh, actually we might we might play the audio all the way through so I'm going to drag I'm going to move my mouse cursor right here and I'm going to drag up just to give me more space on the timeline down here because I want to add my audio on this sixth timeline this this part of the timeline so i've got this audio mp3 file i'm going to drag and drop it into the editor and this is the audio now with audio it's really down to your own preference but normally i reduce the volume because people got their speakers on quite loud and you've got this music playing really really loud it might put people off so normally i set it down to something like minus like minus 15 db something like this so we go to the beginning and play Now when he starts to talk, I want to reduce the volume one more step. So I'm going to zoom in. And at this point, right here, he's going to start talking. So what I'm going to do is click on the audio clip, cut it, and then reduce it down to minus 20 dB. Minus 20. So the volume will just play in the background. It won't be too loud. Okay. All right. <laughs> we have the Mace Windu Force FX lightsaber. And then we want this audio clip to play throughout the whole of the video. So I'm going to select it. So I'm going to left click on this audio clip, copy it, move across the timeline and paste it. And just make sure it's snapped in between and paste it one more time. And we'll paste it one more time. So it's going to play all the way through the whole uh, clip. And at the very end, we've got too much. So we're going to click here. So we go to the end of the timeline, click on this audio clip and cut it and then delete this end part. And then we're going to zoom in at the end to about here, and we're going to fade that audio clip out at the end. So we're going to fade it from here, fading out to zero audio. So let's click there, play it. Just to note, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Uh, with audio, just like video, you can like fade video clips or images in and out. You can fade audio by using this. When you click on the audio clip, there'll be this little handle in the corner. You can drag that across to wherever you want, and then it will. F this will be like the this current set volume, and then it will fade down to zero. And you can fade in and fade out by dragging from the left and right hand side, like here. Just be aware of that. 
So that's what we're pretty much done with this video clip. It's not cut perfectly, but a lot of the tools, uh, really I did this tutorial because I wanted to show you a lot of the techniques and tools. You have to go and refine them now. You have to, you know, really experiment. And I would have taken a lot longer to cut this video. But in this case, I didn't want it to take too long because uh, it's almost an hour video long in duration. But hopefully you've learned a lot of things and hopefully it will help you to use this software and go and experiment. And if you find some great techniques or you find some, you know, nice ways of cutting video, then by all means upload a video to YouTube and share it with me because I'm always willing to learn. Okay, so the last thing I'll say, let's just save this. And what I will do, let's just go to here. So I'm going to upload this, this tutorial that we've just been through. I'm going to upload it to YouTube, but on that YouTube um, description, I'm going to link to these two videos and you'll be able to watch the actual official cut of this video, how I officially cut the video. And I spent a lot longer on that video, so I did better transitions and stuff like that. So there's one here about Pandora's Box Arcade. And here's the one that we just did today about the Star Wars lightsaber. Really, I've replicated this tutorial, what is this editing here in this tutorial. So I'll put a link to these two and you can have a little watch and see. And then you'll see a lot of the techniques we use today in these two video clips. Okay, that's about it for this tutorial. And I look forward to seeing you on the next DCP web tutorial.